cool it is. October the 13th, 2011. It is 1444. Officer LaDonna Moore, Lieutenant Lance Montgerard. Alright, we are now here. It is case number 6211061. This is in reference to uh, Martin Clark and yourself. Alright, tell me about what's going on between y'all two, or the lack thereof of what's supposedly going on between you two. Nothing. Alright. What is he insinuating is going on between you two? I don't know what Martin got going on in his mind. He thinking that me and him is in a love affair. Okay. Why is he... What, why is he... I've got a plethora of letters here. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. When did these start showing up? Well, those are letters that he kicked from up under his door last Friday night. These letters right here started showing up at my house last week. I gave Captain Steven a letter that came. When did we call it? It wasn't yesterday. When did she give you that letter? Yesterday morning. Uh huh, yesterday okay, morning. Okay, she gave it to you yesterday morning. Mm -hmm. I got it that day. Um, no, that's the one day of October the 8th or somewhere around then. Right. Okay. I, did, I came home from work that night. That was Tuesday night I worked because okay. I worked in medical. I got home. And my kids um, get the mail out the mailbox. Mm -hmm. That was in there on my bed with my mail. So I put it to the side and I brought it to work on um, Wednesday morning and I gave it to Cap. I ain't even opened it up. Okay. And there's two other letters here. The one on came that Saturday and okay. one on came that Friday. Okay. And how long have you been? That's the only three letters you've that's received. That's the only thing I've received from Okay. So you see three letters. And. How did you know they're from him? Because I seen Martin Clark address in his room that he had on his letter. He had on wrote his dad. He showed me a letter that he had wrote his dad about me. Okay. Telling his dad how much that he think that I should be his woman, his soulmate, and because his family's Jehovah's Witness like me. Okay. And me and him have Bible discussion all the time, and he always um talking to me about the Bible, stuff that he don't found in the Bible, that I should read this, and you know, stuff like that. That's all it was. Mm -hmm. He took that and you know, turned it to me and him being together. Okay. But he's mailing these letters to you. He mailed them letters to me. He, I asked him how he get my phone number. My, mm -hmm. I mean, say how he get my address. He said he got my phone number and my address out of the phone book. Is he calling you? He can't call me because I got a different number. The number that listed in the phone book is not my okay. number. All right. And these other pages here that y you gave in that there, those are all from him those also? Those are letters that he's write, he writes me. When I come to do head kind of stuff, mm -hmm. he want me, look what I wrote you today. And those letters, what he did was when he got pissed off and mad at me because I told him don't be writing me. And he got made to throw those letters up on though me and Officer Ruiz was working that night. And mm -hmm. Ruiz kept giving me notes, telling myself, Clark wants you, Clark wants you. I didn't want to hear nothing Clark had to say. Okay. Because at that point, I knew Clark was a liar and a manipulator. Okay. So that's when he starts writing all these inmate requests for him, talking about he don't want me to be around him. He just wants the captain to move me to another part of the building and stuff because I'm threatening and harassing him. And the only thing I did was told him, don't be right in me. And I told him I was going to tell my captain about it. So that's when he went off the deep end. And other than these, when these letters came, that's the only three letters that you've ever received? That's the only three letters I ever received from Clark. Okay, so other than those letters there and this here, no other stuff? I don't have nothing else. Okay, cool. Um, and how often do you, when you said that you've gone into a cell a couple of times? Every time I'm in the park. Okay. You can add any other inmate in there. Mm -hmm. When I'm going to talk to somebody else, because mm -hmm. they call me, Clark still be beating on his door, want me to come talk to him all the time. Okay. And then he get mad. He says, you always cut me off. You don't never hear everything I got to say. I don't want to hear all that you got to say. Okay. But so you're not going over there spending time in his cell or anything else then? No. Okay. All right. Cool. Clark called me to his door. Okay. He needs But you're not spending that. time, in other words, you're not spending like a large amount of times at in his cell with him or with any other inmates in their cell. No, uh, okay. uh, not okay. just when they call me, they need something. I ain't at, you're not spending large amount of times uh, with no. Clark no. 
no. or with any other inmate in their cell, like after hours, anything oh, no. like that. Uh -uh. There. Okay. All right. So no, not any time with any other inmates whatsoever no. at all. Uh -uh. None. Okay. Excellent. Um, outside of here, you have no personal involvement with Clark at all. Never have. I ain't never had no personal. Okay. Involvement. I only Do knew Clark since I've been here. Okay. So you don't know him from. So you don't know his family, anybody else whatsoever. His family goes to the Kingdom House. Okay. Which and his mother and his father goes to the Kingdom House right here off of um, 19, okay. right by the sheriff's office. I mean, say the Georgia State Patrol mm -hmm. office. Okay. On my Some days I go over there when I don't make it to my meetings. Okay. Because my aunt go there too. All right. But you don't have contact with him? No. Okay. So you've never, I mean, other than that, unless you just happen to be at the same location as them, you don't personally contact them or anything else like that? No. Okay. All right. So you've never had direct contact with their family or anything else like that? I talked to that lady twice. Talk my to whole, I talked to her. I talked to her twice. That was at the Kingdom Hall one day. Mm -hmm. Where the first time I seen her was here. That's mm -hmm. when Clark told me his parents was a witness, like mm -hmm. me. And I seen her, and I spoke to her, and that was it. Okay, when she seen me again at the Kingdom Hall that day, that, that Sunday, just yeah. in passing, though. Nothing exactly. personal. Okay, no I'm, personal. yeah, I'm talking about nothing personal. You've no. just seen her in passing, and that's been it. But nothing impersonal. Um, no phone calls, nothing like that there. I ain't never called her but one time. That's what I'm saying. I talked to her one t one Wednesday. Mm -hmm. It was last week to ask her about some Immunicare to give to my aunt for my back. Some herbal stuff to take for oh. my back. Immunicare, what is that? It's a... It's a... Some juice stuff that you drink. Okay. Now, how did you know how to get in touch with her? She gave me her number to call her. Okay. And you got that? her door to sell. She gave me her number at the Kingdom Hall. Okay. Okay. That's the only time I ever spoke to Clark Mother. But for to have a relationship with Clark Mother, I don't know that lady like that. I don't know nothing about them for nothing at all. Okay. Now, if you want to verify this, call my auntie. I'll get, I give you her number. You can talk to her because she know more about them people than I do. I don't know them folks. Clark is crazy. Not only that, he ain't he, he don't fantasize this stuff with me. He done did this to Nurse Hilma also. He fantasized being with her. They talking about how he be sitting around here being in the park on his knee, begging her to marry him and all that crazy <laughs> stuff. That's, that's a nut. Yeah, he does write a whole lot, that's for sure. That is a straight nut. Yeah, he does write a whole lot. How you fantasize being with somebody? I have no idea. That's crazy. They ain't still out in me. Caught that one at all. What I want somebody to get some friend of bipolar. And he got mad. I told him, Paul, leave me alone because you be acting mental health. That really ticked him off. But you are mental health. You acting. You acting crazy. Now, and you do not want him sending you any more letters whatsoever. Is that correct? I don't want him even talking to me no more. Okay. Ever. So you want him to have no contact with you whatsoever. And when you were down there at the party tonight, night, did you specifically tell him point blank period not to write you, call you, contact you in any way, shape, fashion, or form? Yeah, and I told him right now. Okay. Okay. That so you Friday, physically have told him not to contact you anyway? Yeah, I told okay. him that. And then when he started that mess Saturday, that, that was Friday night, then that Sunday night, because Saturday I ain't say nothing to him. Ruiz, he called Ruiz to the door. Mm -hmm. And told Ruiz to tell me to come out. I said, I ain't going over. Ruiz said, That girl ain't talking to you. You sitting around here doing that crazy mess to her. So he said, Well, y'all just come over here and talk to me together. So I went to the door with Ruiz. And he's going to tell me, Well, you get, I got these these uh, requests right here. I want you to know what to say to the investor. guy. I said, I don't want to know what to say to the investor. guy. I'm going to tell him what I feel and what's going on with you. Well, I'm going to. Be sure that I talk with him and let him know, you know, he does not need to correspond with you anymore, period. And that you've already told him and that if he should do anything else to get your wishes now, then at this point, then it can get to the point that, 
Uh, it will be stalking since you have voiced your opinion, told him that he, you do not want him to contact you any further. Um, additionally, as far as that goes, I'm also tell um, Captain Stevens, you know, that you do not need to go into that pod so that way it doesn't cause any problems between you and him because I don't want him to retaliate towards you any way, shape, fashion, or form um, because of me telling him that. Um, I've got some loose ends I got to tie up with all this kind of stuff here. Uh, some other questions that I got to dig through because I have not read through all this because I've got three other investigations I'm going through. Man, so. I, and again, what I ain't read through either. So there's like 28, 29 pages of bullshit there I have to finish up reading through, and I'm taking it home tonight so I can finish it all up. So um, I am telling you that this is an actual ongoing investigation, so you're not allowed to discuss this with anyone whatsoever. If it's found out that you are, that's subject to um, disciplinary code with up to a termination. Um, so if you go out talking to anyone, even Captain Stevens or Lieutenant Falk or anybody else in relations to what we've discussed here today, then you can be terminated based upon me finding out that you have done that. Do you understand that? Okay. Excellent. All right. Thank you for coming in. It is now uh, 1456. This concludes our interview. Thank you very much.